Welcome everyone. In the last couple of lectures we have started our study of a landmark paper in stochastic control. It was the paper of Hans Witzenhausen. In that paper basically gave us a counter example to uh, a claim or a belief of that time uh, uh, regarding linear quadratic Gaussian systems. The belief of that time was that uh, any system uh, when so long as any problem so long as it has a linear system with linear observations and all the noise in the Gauss in, in the system was Gaussian and the cost was, uh, was quadratic then such a problem would always admit a controller controllers that were linear in their information. Uh, so and this was a consequence of uh, the separation result that we had shown earlier where you had to you your control uh, this was this was believed because of the separation result we had shown earlier where we had a uh, we had uh, the optimal controller taking the form of a superposition of a the deterministic controller followed by uh, followed by an, uh, an estimator the estimator because of the jointly gaussian nature of the problem of the random variables involved always gave an estimate that was linear in the information and as a result of that the control the optimal control also turned out to be linear in the information. Now this belief continued for uh, to uh, continued for a while because uh, no uh, because that is uh, that it seemed like this is all that was needed the three assumptions were L, Q and G uh, which is the linear system quadratic cost and Gaussian, Gaussian noise and that always gave us a linear that it was believed that that would always give you a linear controller. Witzenhausen's uh, counter example which we discussed last time was that he showed that this does not hold if the information pattern is not classical. So uh, if the information pattern is not classical which means that if at some stage you have that the information known at the previous stage is not known at the current stage uh, some there is some loss of information across stages then then this is not true anymore. And his uh, the, the example that Witzenhausen talked about uh, was this uh, was this simple uh, simple two stage problem. If you remember there was an initial state, initial state was this was a, uh, this here was uh, taken to be Gaussian, this was Gaussian, there was uh, this state was observed perfectly by the first controller who produced an action u1. So, this state was observed as y1, y0. The first controller produced an action gamma 1 of y0 that then changed the state to x1. So, x1 became x0 plus u1. This was uh, observed in a noisy fashion by the second controller. So, the second controller saw the observation as, as x1 plus noise where the noise here again this again is taken to be Gaussian and independent and in fact independent of x0. So, you got x uh, y1 equal to x1 plus noise this is what is observed by the second controller and then the second controller takes an action u2 based on this and so he produces an action u2 equal to gamma 2 of y1 that is this one. And that, that the, the, the resulting state then is x was x2 equal to x1 minus u2 right this was the resulting state. And the problem was to minimize this, uh, this cost which is uh, quadratic cost. But the challenge here is that u2 unlike in the in the classical information pattern u2 is being chosen as a function of y1 alone and u1 is a function of y0 alone. So, in the classical information pattern u1 would be chosen as a function of y0 and u2 would be chosen as a function of y1 and y0. So, u2 would also have access to the information uh, that would be that the first uh, so second controller would have access to the information that the first controller would have but in that is not the case anymore. So, this this part here this here is the non classical information pattern non classical information pattern on information structure. Now, if you write out the, uh, the the cost function is explicitly as a function of uh, of of uh, 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 gamma one and uh, gamma two, here is what you see. You see that you have u one substituted in terms of gamma one. You that's a term you get here. Then you get u two substituted uh, as a function of 
y1 which is x1 plus v, but x1 itself is x gamma 0 of x0 uh, x0. So, uh, uh, plus sorry if this is x1 is gamma 0 of x0 plus x0 I, um, my mistake here this is there is a plus x0 and that plus you get that plus v and then you have uh, out here again uh, the, this term has has come in because because there is x2 is x1 minus u2 right so this becomes therefore the 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 uh, the cost now the the important thing uh, that uh, that's happening in this problem is that the information of the first controller of the second controller the information of the second controller is influenced by the action of of the first controller right the, influ the information of the second controller is influenced by the action of the of the first controller now but controller 2 which is the second controller does not know what controller 1 knew while choosing this action. This is basically the issue of non-classical information pattern. So, controller 2 does not know what controller 1 knew which is which is y0 while choosing its choosing this this action. Now, one thing I one point I want to make is that the first first part here which is you know the information of control 2 being influenced by the action of con, uh, controller 1 this also holds in an MDP. This also holds in an MDP this is basically holds in every dynamic problem because the information that is that is uh, that is uh, uh, that that later controllers will have will depend on the state and that state would get influenced by uh, by the actions of the previous of the previous controller. So, this this all holds in every, every dynamic every uh, every kind of dynamic problem. The the non classicality comes up because of the second part that I have written here which is that controller 2 does not know what controller 1 knew while choosing this action. This is the non classic. This is the non classical information structure. Right. So, uh, what is the how is this therefore different from uh, from the classical information structure? Uh, the 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 difference that ha that occurs is is because because when the when when the uh, the difference be occurs because because when this when the second part holds when the when the second controller does not know what the first controller knew while choosing this action then the then the policy okay then the policy of the first controller affects the information of the second controller so you can see that you can see that explicitly out here see if you if you if you have to choose gamma 2 as a function of uh, function of its information right the information is is x1 plus v but x1 itself is x0 plus gamma 0 of x0 so there is a implicitly a presence of gamma 0 here right so gamma 0 needs to be known in order for you to be in order for you to evaluate what the optimal uh, gamma 2 should be a, on the other hand if you also knew the if you also knew x0 here or in other words y0 if you also knew x0 here then in that case gamma 0 of x0 could be reconstructed from that information x0 itself and therefore this presence of gamma 0 then would not be important because all the information that you can that you can get from gamma 0 of x0 can be reconstructed once you know x0 itself right so as a result of that knowing uh, the the once the the non classical information pattern exists what what tends to happen is is this particular issue that that the that the uh, uh, the 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 information of the later acting controller depends on the policy of the first acting controller not just the action the entire policy of the first acting controller ends up making an appearance here
So, how is this different from an MDP? Well, in an MDP also the past action affects the, uh, affects the information in the future. But the important dif distinction from the uh, in the non-classical problem is that the that in, in an MDP although the past action affects the information, the past policy does not affect the information. So, one does not need to know what policy resulted in that action because we already have the information that is going into that policy for choose uh, you know for choosing the action. So, all, uh, all that we needed to know is completely encompassed uh, in, in, that, in that input information and therefore, the policy itself does not matter right. So, in an MDP past action affects information but past policy does not right so how does uh, so this is this is basically the key difference that uh, that happens because because of the of the uh, non classical information pattern so if you if you recall we were also talking about about how exactly does the pa past policy which means gamma zero uh, sorry uh, which means uh, oh, there is a mistake here this should be should be gamma 1 yeah how exactly does gamma 1 affect the choice of gamma 2 right. So, we can see that we can see that out here. So, remember that uh, so suppose uh, you know suppose let us let us look at the uh, let us look at the 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 optimal uh, gamma the gamma 2 the optimal choice of gamma 2. Gamma 2 star remember of for any value t is really just some simply the conditional expectation of x 1 given x 1 plus v and x 1 that in turn is equal to the conditional expectation of x 0 uh, plus gamma gamma 1 of x 0 conditioned on x 0 plus gamma 1 of x 0 plus v. So, this equal to t let me write it this way this equal to t right. So, now if I wanted uh, this here uh, the this therefore, is the is the uh, is is gamma 2 uh, gamma 2 star of t. Now, if by chance suppose if you if you had a classical information pattern. So, if gamma 2 star gamma 2 star also had access to x 0 then the conditional expectation would then change it would then change to we would get gamma 2 star of of t ok. Uh, we or uh, you, we would get let me write in the conditional expect then the conditional expectation then the conditional expectation would change we would get this equal to the conditional expectation of x1 given x1 plus v comma x0 and that in turn would be expectation of x0 plus gamma 1 of x0 conditioned on x 0 plus gamma 1 of x 0 plus v comma x 0 itself. And as a result of this what happens as a result of this what, what you get is this actually becomes very simple this becomes just gamma 0 plus gamma 1 of gamma 1 of x 0. The, 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 uh, the knowledge of x 0 helps this term come out of the expectation right. But more importantly what is happening is that the the knowledge of x0 is uh, more, more than that what is happening is now that there is the now that there is uh, x0 known here I do not need to know x uh, gamma 1 of x0 out here. So, this here it becomes equal to simply the conditional expectation of x0 plus gamma 1 of x0 given x0 given x0 
uh, and if you want we can from there we can also compute v. So, it becomes just x 0 comma v right. So, in general if you see if you have uh, something of the following form. So, suppose you are you are trying to uh, you have you are evaluating say g of t g of t which is the expectation of some function f of x given f of x plus v equal to t this conditional expectation remember is this here would be a this as a this is now a function of t and for evaluating this function for any value of t right if I want to evaluate this function for any value of t I need to know the, the probability distribution of f x plus v right. So, what this here remember is a random variable is a random variable let us call this so let us say let us call this z say this is a ram, random variable z its distribution depends on x, v and f. So, the, the probability distribution of this random variable depends on the distribution of x, v as well as on f. Right. So, whatever you are conditioning on its distribution itself depends on the function f. Now, on the other hand notice what is happened once if I if I gave the information if I gave access to x 0 then the dependence on, of, on this gamma 1 has gone and all that is remained is just x 0 and v right. So, in particular suppose if in the same way if I had here given given access here to if I had given access to x here then the con this conditional expectation would then become just conditional expectation of f given x comma v. And as a result of that this uh, the, the it would not the, 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 the whatever you are conditioning on this would be independent of f. Of course, it is a different matter that f appears here which is uh, which is what you are taking expectation of, but that is not that is not important the point is that the it is the whatever you are conditioning on it becomes independent of f. Right. So, so this is where the difference becomes if you had uh, where you go when you go from classical to non classical if you if you are in the classical information structure that means if you then you would have access to x and then whatever you are conditioning on would be in, would become independent uh, would become independent of of this function f here this function f here. Uh, so, whatever you are conditioning on is would be a random variable whose distribution is 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 independent of this function f. So, in the case of a stochastic control problem that the the uh, the thing that you are conditioning on would become independent of the previous previous policy right. So, in the uh, so in an MDP this is exactly what happens in an MDP past action affects information, but past policy does not whereas, in a non classical problem. In a non classical problem, past policy can affect the information of the future. So, as a result of this the optimal choice of the policy of the future would depend on the policies of the past right. This is uh, 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 in fact would be functions of the policies of the past. So, the optimal policies of the future so optimal policies of the future which means optimal policy at time 2 is a function of 
the policy at time 1. So, if you remember the, the way we solved MDPs is that we MDPs came about through a nesting of policies. The you had an action uh, that you took at a certain time that resulted in a state, that state then res, uh, res, uh, resulted in an observation, that observation then re resulted in the next action. And this is how we, uh, th there was a nesting of policies where, uh, where the previous policy uh, came up uh, was being composed with the, with the next policy which was being composed with the next policy and so on. So, so in an MDP what we see is is a composition of policies. Right. So, the policies of so policy of uh, in other words policy at time 2 time at, at at time 2 this gets composed this gets composed with di the dynamics or this policy at time 1 let us say compo gets, gets composed with the dynamics which then gets composed with which gets comp uh, uh, so, uh, ok. So, policy at let me write this. So, what we see in an MDP is something uh, uh, something like this. So, you have a you have policy at at time 1 which gets composed by with the dynamics which gets composed with the policy at time time 2 and so on which will get composed with its dynamics again right. So, so you see that there is a composition happening of policies and so on right. On the other hand in a non classical problem you do not have a composition. What you have is that the policy at time 2 is a function of the policy at time, at time 1 ok. So, in a non classical problem policy at time 2 is a function of policy at time 1. So, the policies are function the later policies are functions of the policies of the past. So, because there is no uh, uh, so, so because of because of this reason you cannot nest these policies. So, there is no nesting no nesting of policies possible. possible and no dynamic programming arguments. No dynamic programming so you cannot make there is no dynamic programming arguments possible. So, so as a result of this the policies of the past uh, have to be determined alongside the policies of the future knowing that the policy of the future has to is a function of the policy of the past right. So, what one needs is basically to for what one has to do is if you want to any plausible way of solving this problem what one needs is that the policy at time 2 should be written as a function of the policy of time 1. So, you you this and then you search over the space of policies in order in, in over the space of policies at time 1 and then optimize over that set of policies right. So, this, this there is this, uh, this this therefore becomes this enormous complexity that I was I was talking about in the previous lecture right. Now, the uh, the the other thing that that manifests in in the in the Witson, in the Witsenhausen problem is is the is this. 
So, as I, as I just mentioned the policy of the past affects the, uh, the, uh, the affects the information of the future. But the policy also has its or native purpose which is to which is to minimize the cost. So, the policy appear and ends up hap, ha, having two, uh, two roles to play. On the one hand it has to minimize this, this cost term here and on the other hand it also has to give the right amount of information in or, uh, to the future because it is implicitly present in both of these terms. So, if you see this, this term it, it, the policy is present in this yellow highlighted term here, it is present here as in the uh, again as a cost term, but it is also present here as an argument to, this, to, the policy of, uh, to the policy at the second stage. So, consequently the policy comes up makes an appearance in a dual way, right. So, we say So, the policy of the past contributes to the cost through an action, but also to the information available in the future. Right? It's, so, the, as a result of this the policy we say that the policy has a dual effect. We say in that case the policy has a dual effect. So, I will define this more formally in the coming lecture, but this is the this this is what the dual effect basically means that the the that the information of the future is explicit it depends on the policy of the past. It of course depends on the action of the past and that is that is given and that is true for every problem, but it depends on the policy of the past which is the which is the which is the issue at hand. Right. In that case we say that there is a dual effect in the problem, people also use the word this by in which they say that signaling is present, signaling is, is present. Right. Okay. So, we will now what we will in the next lecture we will look at some more some uh, variants of the Wittgenhausen problem you know and where we will examine whether the dual effect uh, we will formally define the dual effect and check if the dual effect actually holds in the in these variants.